Let's go! Hello everybody and welcome to Sign Rambles, the series where I talk about video games and never shut up about it. And today we have a long awaited one here. Today we are finally going to be talking about Sonic Frontiers. Now I've taken a lot of time to gather up my dots on this one and I can still easily say that with the time I put into this game, this is my second favorite Sonic game of all time. And although I do believe the game is great, it does have its flaws and faults that really hold the game back. I have to be a bit easy on this game though because this is Sonic Team finally trying something new after the dreaded boost formula we've had for so long, especially after Sonic Forces. And with Frontier setting the standard for future 3D Sonic games, we have to sort of look at this game as a pioneer, but I'll talk about the future later. And with that, let's finally get to talking about Sonic Frontiers, a game that is kinda amazing. You know, it's, it's the title of the video. You're supposed to laugh here. If you wish to not be spoiled on the story, please skip to the timestamp here. However, keep in mind that I'll be mentioning parts of the story in later segments throughout the video. So although the Frontier storyline is a breath of fresh air for all the cheesy and childish stuff that we've had for the past 10 years, it's kind of hard to understand or really like get a grasp of. But all the confusing stuff is later throughout the game, the first parts of the game are pretty understandable. So Eggman walks up to this portal that we'll later discover to be a cyberspace portal because it has some connection to the ancients and Eggman wants something with those ancients. I don't know, they don't really get into it too much. But then Eggman goofs up and has to actually like enter cyberspace because of something with his tech or something. I don't know. Me personally, I wouldn't be so clumsy with my tech. So then Sonic, Tails, and Amy pull up to the islands because the emeralds are being read over there. And then Tails gets hit with an enemy EMP like it's Call of Duty. Bring me the EMP! Electronics are down! And turns out, they were getting sucked in by a cyberspace portal, where they all enter in and get stuck there. I mean, except for Sonic, obviously. Knuckles gets trapped there too, but you only know that if you watch the prologue, Divergence. And if you haven't, please watch it, it's really good. So then Sonic comes out, and he gets talked to by a magical AI verse coming from the sky. Mortal. Huh? So then the AI voice tells Sonic that he's the key, like he's DJ Khaled. You are the key. Key, huh? I am the key. And then the voice tells him to find the Chaos Emeralds, destroy the Titans, and tear down the walls between dimensions. Whatever the heck that means. But to wrap up the main part of the story, it's Sonic exploring around the islands to find his friends. And Sonic and friends have the best interactions and the best writing we've seen in a very long time. And this is due to this game being written by Ian Flynn, which if you read the IDW comics and some of the Archie stuff that he worked on, you know that Ian Flynn understands these characters. I have never seen Sonic and Amy get along this much or talk to each other this much outside of the comic books and it might make a certain group of people very very happy. I also really enjoyed that Sonic and Knuckles were basically brothers. And I'm not gonna say much because this cutscene kinda speaks for itself. What's going on with you? Uh, just a little side effect of the island's weird energy. Media. Listen, help me find the Chaos Emerald so I can beat up some big robots. You'll be free and back to guarding the Master Emerald in no time. Sounds like a plan. Like, bro, what are they doing? But I think I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say that my favorite interactions in this game have to go to Sonic and Tails. Sonic and Sage came pretty close, though. Those sure are words you said just now. <laughs> but easily the best part of Sonic Frontier's writing is definitely the way that the characters are written. My favorite character in this game is Sage, and she really has an interesting story arc throughout the game. In comparison to Eggman's other creations, Sage seems to have a mind of her own, and due to this she gets some really interesting character conflicts throughout the story. You start to notice that Sage's despise for Sonic turns into an appreciation for him, and alongside this, an appreciation for Eggman, and Eggman really appreciates her back, because in a way, Sage is Eggman's daughter. The game's story is not even centered around Eggman, it's more of just Eggman letting Sage take control of everything. Alongside this, we have previous callbacks to other Sonic games, but also callbacks to other pieces of Sonic media, including the IDW comics. I have a tangle with love climbing around these ruins. So it's also clear that Frontiers is trying to expand the Sonic universe a bit in terms of the games. 
and at the same time tie everything together so it all seems connected. But what about the part of the story that the game was trying to market overall? The mystery of the islands and whatnot. And I'm not gonna cap, the true mystery, I don't know if we really exactly know yet. What we do know is that these ancients have connections to the Chaos Emeralds and alongside this have connections to Angel Island. And they use these emeralds to fight against the end, which we'll get to that later in much more detail, but yeah. The ancients use these chaos machines and the titans to try to fight against the end, and then they got wiped out and evolved into Cocos, I guess. And although that is really interesting, we still don't have the full scope of it all. We still don't know what this logo means. We see it throughout the game and we have no clue what it means. So although this game's story is shaping up to be something interesting, I thought we would be getting that in the full game, but we have to wait to see where these plot holes lie. The best thing we can do as of right now is to let them cook. I don't know, but the fact that this story is in a to be continued sort of format right now until this DLC comes out, it kind of left a bad taste in people's mouth. It didn't really bother me too much because I know that there's like a lot more going on here. But at the time, we had no clue that the game would be getting DLC, so I thought that when the game had it to be continued, I thought it'd be like we'd have to wait till the next game, and that would have been really bad. But overall, I love the story a lot. I like the direction that they're going in, it's just that I wish that there was at least some kind of closure before we have to wait a while for this DLC to come out and all that. But the story isn't really to blame why the game's ending feels kind of eh. We'll get to that later though, but for now, let's talk about the gameplay of Sonic Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers brings a brand new gameplay style over to the table in this open world oh wait I'm sorry in this open zone video game. Alongside this are cyberspace levels, mini boss fights, absolutely crazy big boss fights. Oh and um there's fishing too. That's kind of cool. So there's a lot going on here, and I'm going to give my thoughts on each piece of gameplay here, starting off with the open zone. Off the jump with open zone, this is the best Sonic has controlled in a long, long time. I can actually run full circles without any trouble. And being able to run around like this in open spaces is sort of a kid of the adventure series, but at the same time still being really fresh and really new. Of course, he also has his usual moves like sliding and stomping, but he also has some new additions like the drop dash, which I didn't expect this to be in a 3D Sonic game, but here it is. But why not the spin dash? Eh, who knows. The main new ability is the side loop, which I think is one of modern Sonic's best mechanics, like, ever. You can use it to solve puzzles, attack enemies, cheese the game, and you can also do this. This game also readapts combat. When the combat was first shown off in this game, my immediate thought is something akin to Devil May Cry or Kingdom Hearts style combat, especially since the moves are really, really flashy. And I can easily say that the combat is really fun and one of my favorite parts about the game. At the start of the game, it feels a little mashy since all you really have to work with is a bunch of punches and kicks, but over time you get to unlock a different set of abilities from Sonic's skill tree, and the abilities are really, really fun. The skill tree isn't too big, in comparison to Sonic Unleashed, the warehouse had way more moves than what this game had, but it's still an overall decent list since most of the moves are real heavy hitters. Sonic has a parry, he has a dodge, he has like a lot of stuff going on here, and they all correspond to any situation, so every move gets its time to shine. And it also helps that the enemy variety is done really well in this game since enemies have different ways to be taken out. And speaking of the enemy variety, the enemies in this game are really really well designed. I think Chrono Island had the best assembly of different enemies to take out and you don't really get to see them in any other islands. And it's kind of weird because one concurrent enemy type gets stronger each island. It would have been interesting to see all of the other different enemy types have stronger forms or variations or different ways to fight them. But there are other well designed enemies in the game so I guess it's kind of fine. So overall, I really really love the combat, my favorite part about this game easily. If you look at the UI, there's definitely a lot more collectibles that aren't just rings, so it's clear that Sonic Frontiers went the collectathon route like Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie did, which I think is smart for a game as big as this. There's memory tokens that correspond to each island depending on who you're looking for, 
there's vault keys that you find in cyberspace or even sometimes when you defeat enemies or just laying on the ground man like what is that doing there but i honestly like how this gameplay is laid out my worst fear about this game is that you would have a big old island with nothing to do but like running around because that's how it looked at when like the game was first shown off but I'm glad that we were very, very wrong on that because there was actually a lot to do in the open zone islands. You could do puzzles, there's different platforming sections, you can just beat enemies. There are a lot of ways to collect what you're looking for in this game. There are also mini games that are played across the islands as you progress through the game and I think these mini games are really fun. Who knew that I would be cutting grass in a Sonic game, bro? And with so much to explore, the open zone is definitely like the best part of this game, like overall. But real quickly, let's go over each island. Kronos Island is the first island in the game, and with that, it's your typical starter island. It's not too big, but there's enough room to run around and explore. And with the enemies and puzzles and platforming challenges that come with this island, it's a good island to show off the mechanics of the game. So I think that Kronos Island is a pretty fine island as it is. It's not my favorite island, but it's still pretty darn good. Case in point, Ares Island, which is the very next island, this island is really fun. Ares Island is way bigger than Kronos Island, having a lot more going on with it, and has the most fun enemy variety in the game. Chaos Island isn't really that much of a strong island in comparison to Ares and Kronos, but I don't think it's terrible. I definitely have a few gripes with it that I'll get into. But now that we've talked about the open zone, let's talk about the other half of this game, which is Cyberspace. Now, throughout the patience that we have for this game, Cyberspace was definitely the most worried about feature of the game. As most people notice how this game was taking level designs from previous Sonic games, and the fact that they were rehashing the same old locations all over again. But even so, in some way, despite its issues, I actually kind of like Cyberspace. But let's go over its flaws first. Firstly, the controls and physics don't match up with the open zone. Sonic's turns are wider, there's no jump momentum, the homing attack of enemy speed has been turned down. In comparison to the other boost games, Sonic Frontiers has a way different and way slower setup, which is the complete opposite of what the boost games are supposed to be. But even throughout that, Cyberspace's controls is laid out just well enough that it actually feels satisfying to keep on going back, and that's because the levels this time around are actually well designed. Unlike Sonic Forces, they don't hold your hand, you actually have to press buttons this time around. But even so, there are some levels that are good, and some... Oh my god, what am I playing? I will say that the level design is really top-notch this time around, and it feels really fun to plow through these levels, despite the physics and controls. We're finally going back to that feeling you haven't unleashed in generations where it feels really, really good to S-Rank levels. And on top of S-Rank and giving you a vault key, you can also collect all the red star rings in a level and collect a certain amount of rings in a level to get vault keys. I even found the 2D cyberspace levels to be enjoyable because it actually feels a lot faster in 2D in comparison to 3D. And I'm not a huge fan of 2D sections, so that is saying something. The one thing I really do wish is that they went for more original level designs in terms of like the visuals. We've been seeing Green Hill, Sky Sanctuary, and Chemical Plant for like a while now. All we really have for originality is these city stages. But with how kinda low my expectations for Cyberspace were, it was actually way better than I thought it was. So I think Cyberspace is pretty okay. All right, so the next thing that I wanna talk about in this game is actually the- uh Going back to the open zone here, the open zone actually includes many bosses in the forms of guardians. And other than the four ninjas and the four pillars, there's actually a lot of variety here with these guardian fights. And all the guardian fights are extremely different in their own way. And I'd actually say that the guardian fights are fairly challenging too. And the best part is, if you really did have fun with a guardian fight, you could always just fight them again after you return to the open zone after going to a different area. And it also helps that some guardians spawn in different locations as well. Most guardian fights involve doing a certain type of gameplay in order to get the boss to its weak point so you can start wailing on it with your normal attacks. Whether it be grinding on rails, a quick step in section, falling from the sky, the guardian fights really are just a fun time man. So really quickly, here is the top 5 of my favorite guardians in this game. Number 5, Shark. If I can find him. 
Oh, there he is. I know some of you guys may be questioning me on this point, as this is sort of like one big quick time event. But I think what kind of seals is that some of the inputs are delayed after you press them, making a sense of urgency when you fight this boss. And I think it also looks like really exciting and sort of ridiculous to see Sonic hanging on the back of a flying shark in the desert. Like, like what am I looking at? Number four, Spider. <laughs> The spider fight involves Sonic falling through the sky in order to do damage to the spider by also going through loops that damage the spider. And this leads to Sonic crashing into the spider in order to do damage to him. I've always been a bit of a fan of these falling sections in Sonic games, I just think they can be really fun, and this game really shows that. And it adds a bit more depth when you need to collect a certain amount of loops in order to damage the spider enough so you can attack it. And if you get really good enough, you can just hold the boost button the whole time and just fly all the way down for a quick fight. I think it's really satisfying. Number three. Hold on, he's coming. Just uh, give him a second here. Oh, hi, Betty. I really do like the squid boss fight a lot. One of the main things you have to do in the fight is boost management because you gotta make sure that you're even fast enough to catch up to it because you will fall off the ramp if you're not going fast enough or if you can't keep up with the squid. And I also think that it can get really nerve-wracking when you're getting up close to the squid and you have to dodge the lasers up close. And when you do catch up with squid, they do put up a bit of a fight. On top of having their own shield and also trying to swing back at Sonic, they can also fly away if you don't dish up enough damage in time, therefore getting you into another quick step section on the ramp, one that'll be even harder. Number 2, Sumo. Out of all the Guardian fights here, this is the one Guardian fight where every time I see it, I will fight it. I always think this fight is a really fun time. As soon as you go near Sumo, your space becomes limited as you get trapped inside of an electric wrestling ring. But you can hoping attack and bounce off of the ring in order to do multiple hits towards Sumo. And on top of Sumo being a relatively bigger enemy and a much more bigger target, this is basically combos as a boss fight. Honestly, whenever I fight Sumo, I always want to record how many hits I get on it. Cause the one downside of this fight is that it can end relatively quickly because of how much damage the electrical fences do to him. Number 1. Ghost. Now I'm pretty sure that most of our excitement and love for the ghost boss fight is from the first time we played against this boss because we had no clue that this thing was a boss fight. And honestly this is one of the most unique Sonic boss fights ever. It's a shame that you have to do side loops during the boss fight because you get rings if you do side loops because doing this boss fight with a low amount of rings is the most stress inducing thing possible. Basically this fight is a platforming course where you have to get to these ghost structures in order to do damage to the ghost by using side loop. And I think it's really interesting that they tried to do a boss fight where you don't really have to physically attack it with your moves, but you attack it with your speed, in a way. And due to how fun the platforming is, even after your first time fighting this boss, it's still a really fun playthrough. But I guess that does it for the Guardian mini-boss fights. Let's get to the real stuff here. So in all the islands except for Rhea, there is a titan that you have to fight at the end of it. Now, when we first got teased about the titans, the first thing I was wondering, how is this tiny hedgehog gonna take down that? And I knew Super Sonic was involved. I was ready for Super Sonic. What I wasn't ready for is how Super Sonic would play and the absolute energy that these boss fights give. Now, although this isn't the exact recording of me fighting this boss for the first time, I do remember pausing around here and absolutely losing my mind that this was happening. After all these years and excluding forces, we had control of Super Sonic and it was absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely just chaotic fun and I just love it. Seeing Super Sonic do all like the flips and the moves and like doing all like the crazy punching and kicking and laser shooting it's 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 just insane what they did here the energy of the music and like the visuals just absolutely screamed the dark era and the shonen era of sonic it brings back that energy that whenever sonic went super he wasn't fooling around and just like all the other enemies in the game every boss fight is different you're still wailing on the titans as super sonic but there's different ways they handle it and midway through the fight they power up with these little canisters or whatever but that's not gonna stop super sonic and sonic forces this is how you get me excited to do a quick time event 
I think most of the fun of these fights comes from seeing Sonic do all this crazy stuff and like just like the overall energy of it all. I'd basically just be repeating myself if I were to continue on. So instead I'm gonna rank the Titan boss fights. They go in this order. Knight, Giganto, Wyvern, and Supreme. Knight is up there with one of my favorite Sonic boss fights of all time. He's like right behind Dark Gaia. Knight is really crazy. Bro, when Knight threw his shield and then Sonic had to parry the shield and then ride on top of the shield to ram it in Knight's face, like what is happening? <laughs> and then Sonic relives his days with Excalibur and kind of turns into Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. I think opening this game up with a Giganto boss fight makes it one of the most iconic Sonic boss fights of all time. And the game hasn't even been out for like, well it's been out for almost half a year, but it's still like one of the most iconic Sonic boss fights now. I think the Giganto fight really just solidified that Sonic is back. The Wyvern boss fight has you fly across the entire island as you're like dodging missiles. And then you're doing a lot of parrying attacks and like trying to dodge all of Wyvern's long moves because he has the most janky hitboxes ever. And I think he has the most brutal quick time events. Super Sonic for real said here comes the choo-choo train and he ate 15,000 ballistic missiles. And then there's Supreme and uh, Supreme is like uh... Uh, I'm getting tired, I'll get to Supreme later. And that is the boss fight section. And after all that action, I feel like going fishing. In the open zone, sometimes you will see these cyber space portals with a purple glow instead of a red glow like usual. These are Big's fishing spots. Yeah, that's right. Big the cat is back. And to be honest, out of all the things we heard about Sonic Frontiers, this is the very last thing I expected. And it's really, really relaxing and chill. There are times where I just boot up the game and just went fishing to collect stuff. The fishing is relatively simple. If you played Persona 5, you recognize this. But I think what makes this so charming is the collectibles and all the different things you can catch, other than just like different fish. You can collect item boxes, springs, treasure chests, all other wacky stuff like that. Bro, am I in Florida? But what makes fishing so special is that you can kind of use it to cheese out the game. You see, throughout the open zone, you collect these purple coins, and I honestly never knew what these were for when I first played it, until I visited these spots. And you get a lot more purple coins during Starfall, which is an event that takes place in the open zone islands where enemies be spawn. However, you can collect these star bits? I don't know, they look like the Mario Galaxy stars. But you catch the fish, or whatever you catch, that turns into tokens, and you use those tokens to trade with big so you can get collectibles. You can get 100 rings, cocos, volkeys, memory tokens, red and blue seeds of the fence, and you can kind of use this stuff to kind of cheese the game. Now I'm pretty sure in update 1 when they added extreme mode that fishing is relatively nerfed really hard and you can't really use it to cheese the game like you did before, but you could really, and I mean really, cheese the game. And if you have the Monster Hunter DLC, you can also do this. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, you're not coming to the cookout, my boy. When I saw that they added this in, it kind of made me feel like they really, really did care about this game this time. Sonic Team wanted to go all out, and this is them showing me that they went all out. Well, other than the boss fights, but you know. And I think that's really it in terms of the gameplay. So now, I'm gonna beat this game up. Complaint number one, the visuals. Some of it. Now, don't get me wrong, Sonic Frontiers is a really, really pretty game. When you're standing still, the visuals have a tendency to, let's say, pop in the background. Rings pop in, springs pop in, everything pops in. Now, we've noticed that things would pop into the background in earlier Frontiers footage, and we thought they would be able to fix that. They didn't. And I'd give the excuse that the game had a lot to visually handle, but the fans already fixed it for them. Like how? You can always leave with the Sonic fans to fix them. But other than the poppin', I also just wish that the game had a lot more visual polish in some areas. Some examples include when Sonic is like doing combat, there's no exact effect when he's punching or kicking normally, only when he hits the enemies, and even so, when he's just punching and kicking by himself, it just looks so stiff, without like some kind of hit effect. I know this is a completely different game, but look how much the hit effects change Sonic's punches and kicks and how much weight they give. I know that some other moves have different effects as well, but his normal punching and kicking just looks off without some kind of effect. It doesn't help that Sonic is sometimes still and motionless. Like, look what he uses homing shot. 
at the end he's like completely still. And one final example I'll give, during the shark boss fight, Sonic's feet just clip through the sand and it looks really really rough. But you can kind of see what I'm getting at here in terms of like the visuals. This game does have a lot of visual polish in some areas and I do think it can be good looking, but I just wish it had a bit more so it didn't really feel so rough at times. Sure doesn't help that three islands look exactly the same either. Alright, complaint number two. <laughs> now let me be clear, I do not hate Chaos Island, but it's definitely my least favorite island in the game. I think Chaos Island is really cool in some areas, I mean this is Tails Island, we get all the cool Tails interactions, but that doesn't matter when every time you want to run around and you go on a ramp, you get into an institute section that you can't escape from. Like I'll try to go to my next path or like do something completely different and then I accidentally run on a ramp and then boom I have to play through a section that I just don't want to play through and it's really annoying. It also doesn't help that when you expect a collectible to come out of one of these symbols, you don't get a collectible, you get a ramp or a spring that leads into another 2D section. And if you already think this is a problem, well, whenever you do want to play through a platforming section, it's also in 2D. That big old structure right there with the tornadoes, that's a 2D section. We already have cyberspace, and just hold on a minute, isn't this a 3D Sonic game? What are we still doing this for? I'd be fine if it was only just in cyberspace, but this is like a whole island nearly dedicated to 2D sections. So I already wasn't really that huge on Chaos Island, and then... Oh, and then, I got to this stupid, annoying, literally pointless pinball section. I cannot stand the pinball section. It takes way too long for its own good, and you don't really have control of it either. And once you lose all your pinballs, you just restart it again. You, you just restart it again. You already have like 7 minutes wasted from your first attempt, so here's another 7 minutes to try to get it down again. And it's so slow. It's not like the ones in Sonic Adventure where it's really fast. It's so incredibly slow. Just to show you how much pain I was in when I was going through this, I had accidentally left my mic on while recording for a bit. So listen to just how I reacted to beating this pinball section. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh my god! Finally! So on top of way too many 2D sections, being forced to play those 2D sections, even when you don't want to, you have this BS pinball section. But then you have like the best boss fight in the game, so it's not really all that bad. But those are my overall personal complaints about the game. It just makes the game feel a little rough at times, but I don't think it's really too bad on the rough side. I still think it's a really smooth experience overall though. But before we talk about the end game, I want to give this short section to the music of Sonic Frontiers. I've barely used the other Frontiers music in this video just because of this section right here, and I will just let the tracks play out and call it a day, but there's really something I gotta say about this music. As far as Dave said, this is the biggest Sonic soundtrack, and I mean like the biggest in one entire game. And although the music is so different from one another, there is one thing that holds it on together. Since it's a Sonic game, the music sounds good. And I'm not even going to talk about the banger cyberspace tracks yet, I also just want to talk about the ambient slow open zone music the game has. Each corresponding open zone island has its own song and it sounds different each time because as you progress through the game, the music changes but it relatively sounds the same. These are called movement tracks and I'm going to play my favorite three music tracks that come from the first three islands because Aranos and Rhea do not have their own movement tracks. So yeah, here they are. <laughs>
This track got a little more playtime because this is actually my favorite open zone track in the game. I just think it's so intense and yet so peaceful at the same time. It's really, really great. But next up, let's play some of my favorite cyberspace tracks. <laughs> Then the three bosses. Following the showdown on Chaos Island, Sonic looks way more tore up than usual. When I first saw this, I was a little confused because of, like the background they were in. I was just like, why did they return to Kronos? And the funny thing was, this is not Kronos. This is actually Rhea Island, which sort of works as a midway point of the game. Or not really midway, this is like near the end of the game, but it's sort of treated like that. The entire purpose of Rhea Island is to shut down six towers in long but entertaining platforming sections. And uh, that's it. There's nothing else you really do here. I will say due to how high you go up and how long these platforming sections are, you have to be really on your game than platforming because when you fall, you don't really have a way to recover. And if you can't lock onto anything to save your life, you're going to fall for a long time and climb up for a long time. So it makes these platforming sections really intense and entertaining, and I really do like that. But once you get down from the six towers, this island is practically useless. It's just a bunch of empty space to sort of run around in. And you might just think to yourself, maybe this should have belonged in Kronos Island, in which you'd be right. Rhea and Oranos were actually connected to a much bigger version of Kronos Island in the early stages of the game, but I guess because of Chaos Island originally being the last island and that would make the game too short, they split Kronos Island into two different islands. Which isn't a bad compromise, but like... 
you could have made it at least look a little different. The other purpose that Rhea Island has is lore purposes, because every time you shut down a tower, you get a piece of information about why the ancients connect to the Chaos Emeralds. And you also start to gain hints on what the ancients were exactly up against. And meanwhile, as Sonic shuts down each tower, he keeps on getting more and more corrupted. Then it leads into this cutscene, and I think this is the most pain that we've ever seen Sonic in in any of the games. And I was fully expecting a cybersonic form or something crazy. And I guess due to Sonic consuming almost like all of the cyber energy, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy were able to come out. And in order to get him out of this state, they formed a circle around him, went back to cyberspace, and let Sonic... Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to say this. They formed a little friendship circle to release Sonic of all of his cyber energy so he could be normal. What kind of Kingdom Hearts stuff is this? But I mean, okay, man, I'll, I'll roll with it. We also find out that the only possible solution is for Sonic and Eggman to work together. So, uh, there's that. The only way I can keep you alive is if you're not here when it gets out. When what gets out? Oh! And now we're entering Oranos Island, and I think Oranos is a pretty cool island. The best way I can really describe it is a Kronos Part 2, but does it really have the energy of the final island? Eh, not really. I mean, sure, with the context of the story, it is the final island, but it doesn't really give me that aesthetic. It doesn't really have that drive or the intensity for me to, like, really, really get through with this island so I can see what happens next. Unlike Rhea, Oranos does have its own set pieces, so it doesn't just literally look like Kronos. There's this nice and bright red flower field. There's these big old structures. I think Oranos looks really, really nice. This island also has some of the strongest enemies, and they really take the most hits. So no matter how many red seeds of power you chug, It'll take a lot to take them down, which I think is really satisfying because combos. I love doing combos. I didn't mention it with Chaos Island, but Orano Island has more of these hacking missions, which kind of resemble top down shooters like Galaga or Toho. It's an interesting change of pace. There has been many, many, many different gameplay styles in Sonic, and the last one I really expected is a top down shooter. But after grabbing enough vault keys, it's time to unlock the last Chaos Emerald in order to get to the final boss of the game. So our last title boss here is Supreme, and with a name like Supreme, you expect this to go out with a bang, right? Right? It's kinda sad that Supreme lacks the energy that most of the other boss fights had, but at the same time I can see what they were trying to do for this boss fight. But it just really isn't engaging in comparison to some of the others. Like with Giganto, you were just going in and wailing on him. Wyvern, you were flying around dodging missiles. Knight, you were like riding on his shield and all that. And you're just dodging, like, these yellow diamonds. There's a lot of parrying involved, too, and, like, I don't know. This fight just really wasn't it, and it wasn't really what I expected. Only got little excitement out of it, but nothing too crazy in comparison to some of the others. Although, this Evangelion reference right here did make me jump out of my seat a little. I think that's really cool. So, already, I was not feeling this boss fight. And if you're playing on normal mode, this is your final boss of the game. However... If you're playing on hard mode, you get something even crazier. That is if you're a really big bullet hell fan, I mean, come on now, people. Okay, but in all seriousness, I think this is the biggest missed opportunity in any Sonic game. Can you just imagine how sick it would have been if we were flying around as Super Sonic, flying around this planet and just beating it up into chunks, and if we control over the Supreme Titan as Sage to start blasting it? Like... It would have been so cool, but instead we get a Toho section. Now, I do think this boss fight can be a bit challenging, especially when it starts spraying light and dark shots and you have to alternate between the shots, but also have to like dodge around and then like all the lasers. It's a really challenging boss fight, but it's not the challenging boss fight I expected or one that I even wanted. This is supposed to be what you earn for playing through hard mode. And I don't know if this is exactly worth it in comparison to all the other bosses in the game. This really could have been like the sickest Sonic boss fight of all time. And they fumbled the bag in my opinion. This isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think those hacking missions would lead up to this. I thought the hacking missions were just hacking missions. Not whatever this is. I will say though that this boss fight does get pretty intense later down the line. So it isn't all bad. But I just wish that it was something like way way more. 
After this is just a quick time event, and then you beat the game. And although story wise this is a pretty big ending, I do wish that gameplay wise it was something way more crazy so it would have stuck with us. Cause as of right now, this is all we really have in terms of the ending of Sonic Frontiers. The story clearly hasn't really fully finished yet, we still have like a DLC pack to wait for, but for the base game I just wish that there was something to really like make us sit down and really think about what just happened, instead of just me thinking about what could have been the sickest Sonic boss fight of all time. So yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of the ending that we've got for right now, but I know it's gonna change in the future. I've really gotta say that the journey we had towards this game was a really really fun one. We had our ups, we had our downs and whatever, I don't want to sound cliche here but we weren't exactly sure what this game was really going to be. For me personally, I was always really optimistic about this game, I really had a feeling that it was going to be something special, and even with the problems it has, it really is something special to me. Even if we're still treading on old territory, Sonic Frontiers really set up something new for Sonic Team to do. This game opened up a lot of doors into what future 2D Sonic games could look like. And even with the flaws that the game has, we're still on the right path. And it's clear by the post-launch DLC content that we're getting in the future that we're going to have hints of what the future of Sonic could really look like. So I think that Frontiers, while not perfect, is my second favorite Sonic game and I really do appreciate what it's doing for the series right now. I give this game a solid A rank, since I don't want to do number scores. But before I end this video, I want to say thank you for watching all the way through. And I'm really sorry y'all had to wait so long for this video to come out. This video is definitely out at a time where I did not think it would drop at. I wanted to try and like do the best that I can to make this video the very best it can be. This is clearly like my longest video ever. And I think it's one of my best videos. So I really wanted to get into that mood to really put as much time and as much quality I put into as possible. But I finally have it here, and I really hope you guys liked it. But for real though, thank you for watching this video, and if you really really liked it, don't forget to like or whatever, comment what you think about this game and about this video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys some other time.